So um, show me what else you have. Well, you just reminded me of this artifact, so I'll bring this ahead of the... So this, this again, you can see very clearly, you can see the before and after where someone has cut it out, and this is actually on someone's, yeah. someone's, yeah, I, um, I don't iron artifacts, but it seems like I <laughs> am remiss. Um, so someone has cut this out, and this was attached to someone's uniform. You can see the so stitches beautiful. still. And so this person, we have a really interesting artifact. Um, let me see. It's hard to see. I've tried to do a high resolution scan and there's no bringing it back. That's the problem with um, paper from this era. It's, it goes pretty fast. But so this is for someone named Amelie Mar Marks and she was deported from Darmstadt to Theresienstadt, which uh. made me think of that. And this was her um, badge, which she wore on her concentration camp uniform. She wow. actually survived and ended up in the Dallas area, which is amazing. Holy cow. Yeah. I know, it's amazing. But it's pretty, it, you know, I haven't seen I haven't seen what many of these. What is that? So it was a sign that was around her neck on the transport. It's her right. deportation marker. Wow. Right. Yeah, it's pretty rare. And amazing, you know, part of what's hard in our field is so many, if you're in the middle of trauma, if you're deported, you can't bring your possessions, or if you bring your possessions, they're taken from you, then you're in a concentration camp. Usually you're in four or five. That's something that I didn't really understand. Four more is that yeah. they would be transferred over and over. They might have been in four or five more camps. Was that to keep people confused and not plotting to No, do anything, uh, as far as we can tell, it was simply that they, they were considered labor pieces, and depending on where labor was where needed, need. you got wow. shifted around. Well, and you know, late in the war, sure, I think they were moving them more as mm -hmm. the fronts were compressing, but well, that's, that death was marches that's and very late, yeah. Germany, right. but, yeah. but they would just shift people around when they had, yeah. you know, a farmer calls and say, I've got, I don't know. Um, so that's pretty interesting and amazing that she survived. And then um, it has to be hard for her to have saved that too. Well, yeah. So that's what I was getting Holy at. It's hard. Cow. It's so perplexing to imagine how did these people maintain these artifacts and get them all the way here. Holy and clearly, if that's your only possession, you yeah. do what you can to get it. But of course, a lot of people had nothing, zero. Yeah, but you wouldn't want that, no. right? So this piece, we both. <laughs> love, if you can say that you love a Holocaust artifact. I know, artifact. I just felt really bad because I just said about that how beautiful it is, and I didn't mean it. I mean, you know. Better better beautiful than my, oh, this is so cool, which when uh, yeah, I first yeah, get yeah, an yeah. artifact, that's my instinct. No, yeah, no. And then, uh, you know, that's not really what I mean. Yeah. So this cap was worn at liberation by Mike Jacobs. Um, Mike Jacobs lost about 80 members of his family. Uh, he came from a little town uh, called Konin uh, in Poland, and Mike founded our museum. Uh, he came together with about 125 Holocaust survivors in the Dallas area in 79. Wow, that many. 78, 79, yeah. And, and by 83, they had incorporated themselves. And in 84, Mike and his wife, Ginger, went to uh, Belgium and arranged to have the first boxcar from the Nazi era that ever came to a museum shipped to the Port mm. of Galveston, and then they brought it up by flatbread, and it, it's still in our museum to this day. We have some, um, some great imposing pictures yeah. of them trying yeah. to load and unload and Yeah, move it was very and, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was very and I'm glad impressive. I wasn't in charge. <laughs> but this was his cap that he had when he was liberated, and the reason it doesn't look particularly worn is because they had he had been on a death march, they had transferred him into a new camp, and at that point, they grabbed new pieces of clothing that were lying around, and that's what it came from. So this is not what he wore throughout the war. Uh, he was in Auschwitz. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, he had a number on his arm, tattooed as a, as a laborer in Auschwitz, and he came to the museum to tell his story until about three or four days before he actually passed away. Um, and he used to talk to kids and say, you know, this this is who I was, this is who I am, and you need to never lose hope. I mean, it was a really incredible, incredible message. Well, and we hear all the time yeah. from kids who were impacted by his message, yeah. which is yeah. helps. And multiple generations. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Kids who brought their kids in and who, who yeah. are coming back again. So tell me about the museum itself. How many, how big is it? How many artifacts do you have? You're not connected to the national. No, so, so we're an independent museum founded by Holocaust mm -hmm. survivors. We uh, moved downtown to the uh, West End. We're right across the street from the, from the Sixth Floor Museum, the Kennedy Museum. We moved there in 2005. Started out at the Jewish Community Center uh, on North Haven. And uh, we're a 
about 6,000 square feet, but that includes a theater where Holocaust survivors to this day give testimony and a special exhibit gallery. Mm -hmm. So the actual museum is probably about 4,000 square feet. It's pretty small. Uh, last year we brought in more than 83,000 uh, visitors, so we wow. do a really good, and half of those were school children from, That's great. from the surrounding area. And archives, Felicia. Uh, <laughs> we have about 10,000 artifacts. Um, about 2,800 are books and rare books. Then we have about 3,000 um, paper-based artifacts, letters, things like that, identification cards. We have about 3,000 photographs. Mm. Um, of those, some are you know, more gruesome concentration camp photos, but a lot of them that are significant to us is showing a family's life before, during, and after the Holocaust. Some really impactful artifacts in there. And then we have about 1,800 three-dimensional artifacts. There's so more things like this that we're bringing. How do you, and it's different, you're a museum, mm -hmm. and I'm a private collector, and much of my library is, uh, because I have a friend who has over 100,000 pieces in his library of all the good things, mm -hmm. and I said, you can't really understand the world without all the bad things. You've got all the good things. What about the bad things? So I have some dark, really dark stuff, and I have a really hard time buying some of it, and, and and the only thing that gives me solace is, I think, unless you're a museum, who are you that you're buying these things? You know, who am yeah. I bidding against? There's some you strange know? scenarios we get into because we have to research every artifact that comes in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we spend a full day between us on one artifact. Yeah. And so when you're doing that, what you find is, a, you know, sometimes you find that there's a similar artifact in the National Holocaust Museum, which is great. And then they've already done a lot of research and right. context and built it around. But sometimes it's an unknown artifact you don't know anything about. You're trying to verify what it is. And sometimes the only thing you find that's similar at all are some Nazi memorabilia websites, both having, you know, concentration camp uniforms, which you're like, why are you collecting that? if you're on a Nazi memorabilia, but also a lot of Nazi ephemera and items, and they have descriptions for the purpose of selling them. But maybe they've done a lot of research and mm -hmm. you can corroborate it when you have that starting point. But I've gone on some websites that I'd, are, are very, very strange. Yeah, we, I've never done that. I just buy from auction houses. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't want to meet some of the people right, right, that might yeah. have yeah, some yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's really, like, uh, this chair I have, I bought this. Um, this is a chair, you can read the bottom. Oh, oh boy. There you go. Oh, goody, goody. The so, Staatspolizei, the, the secret state secret. police. So, yeah. I mean, here's a chair for questioning. Right. I, I, I don't want this anywhere. Right. I don't want this in my house. You know what I mean? I, yeah. well, I, 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 there's some things that are so spooky, but you don't want it to go away. Well, and honestly, that's how we get approached by many of our donors. We don't purchase any collections. They're all donated. But a lot of our donors are very um, nervous that they have, and a lot of these things were liberated. Yeah. Um, but they're nervous that they have the item, and we have no judgment. Um, and part of our motivation for taking it in is to keep them off sites like that. Yeah. And that's part of our donors' motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And frequently we have, I'm thinking it's particularly now, so the greatest generation is passing away, and so we have people, grandparents, great grandparents, they open up a trunk in the attic and they say, Oh, oh my gosh, exists, you know, yeah. dad no had a idea. Nazi flag. What what and, and they call <laughs> yeah. they call us and I say, Well, ho hold on. I said, Did your father serve during World War II? Well, yeah, of course. I said, breathe easy. This was liberated. Trust right. me, he brought it back with him. You know, but they get very nervous and yeah. Yeah. as well they should. Well, you know? and you remember we saw that form where there's a form created oh, yeah. by the US Army, God love them, where they said, you know, we all know you're not supposed to do this, but just list all the what items you liberated. That just is list. so funny. So it's against yeah. the rules. It's against the Army rules. They know everyone's doing it. They wanted to basically declare it, and it's a form, and the soldier filled it out. Yeah. That's amazing. And he said, well, I got this, I got this, Although I got this. Although we don't know if he filled it out honestly. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That could have yeah. been, that that been just the yeah. little top layer. Yeah. This, this